Beautiful barble. There we go. Fish on. Shocking net in there. There he is in, in the bag. Hello and welcome to Cooper's Commercial Match Angling. I've come here today to Cars Lakes, uh, Halcyon Lake, which is where I won a match at the weekend. And I'm going to show a different tactic. Uh, what I found at the weekend was that I started short on pellets, caught a couple of nice carp, but then just feeding pellets and fishing pellets, the, the fish weren't coming to them, the carp wanted something to eat. So I started to feed maggots on that line, caught a few silvers, which was great. But then the silvers disappeared as if the carp had come in again. Caught one carp by feeding maggots, but then felt that the noise of the maggots and feeding maggots wasn't actually drawing the carp. So I started feeding maggot and fishing maggot, but also throwing a couple of pellets over the top, which drew me a fish in, caught another carp, fed some more pellets, drew another carp in, caught another carp, but, but fishing maggots on the hook and also kindering in maggots, but feeding two pellets over the top of that line. Hopefully I can show that again today and we can catch a few fish. So basically I'm going to start my match exactly the same as I did at the weekend, which was tapping in a few pellets and fishing pellets. So I'm going to band a 6mm pellet on the hook. Fill my kinder pot with 5 or 6 6mm. Six a pinch of fours, probably eight or ten fours. Dunk my pot to wet my pellets so they sink. Ship out to my marker, which is a join on my pole and in line with the tree in the, on the far bank. Tap in a few pellets from a height just to make a bit of a noise. Then slowly lower my rigging. And basically just be patient, sit and wait. Sign straight away. Hold that rig and lower the pellet down slowly so it looks natural. But I have no problem in sitting now for five minutes and get and, and waiting for an indication. See, I've had two two indications. Unfortunately, no fish. But they're responding to that pe that pellet, that noise at the moment. So I don't want to put a hundred pellets in my peg because then I've got a hundred to one chance of hooking a fish. Where at the moment I've fed probably twenty pellets. So I'm just going to wait until that basically they've cleared that twenty pellets out. Hopefully by then I'll have caught a fish. But if nothing happens for five minutes and I stop getting indications, I'll feed again. Hey, really, you're trying to draw one fish in, catch it. You're not spreading bait all over your peg. You're fishing nice and tight, nice and tidy. See, I think these first indications, uh, as we know in this lake, there's a lot of small F1s. And I think a lot of them indications are... Initially, them small F1s, otherwise I think I'd have hooked a carp. Because the F1s are like 4 ounces. There's a lot of small ones. But you probably struggle to get a 6mm pellet in the mouth. If I fished a 4mm pellet, I'd probably be getting an F1 every chuck in. Which is not what I'm here to catch. I would be if they were a pound a piece. See, like nothing's, I've had three indications off that feed, and now, you know, I'll give it another minute, but nothing's really happening. So for me, that's time to feed again. That says to me, they've been in, cleaned my peg out, and there's not a lot of there left, so I need to make something happen. So first things, lay your rigging, because you get a noise off laying your rigging. 
and obviously give a chance to the fish to see that pellet fall again. Nothing happens within 30 seconds, I'll refeed. I'm not going to throw any bait at all at the minute. Wet your pellets, give them a dunk. These guru pots are great because the water runs out the holes in the bottom, so you're not tipping water in. It's drained off by the time you get there. Lay me rig out. Tap my pellets in nice and tidy, nice and tight. So we're just on our second feed now. I'm just waiting to see if we're getting another indication. No lifting and dropping, just basically waiting. There's an indication. So there's no, there's no rush to start throwing bait all over your peg at all. It's just about having the first 20 minutes, half an hour. Just seeing what happens, really. Hopefully we can pick up a couple of car. Just make sure that float's always in line with your marker, basically over your feed area. You're setting a little trap. The tighter you can fish, basically trying to fish in a pint pot, the more chance you've got of actually getting bites. Always check your pellet as well, make sure it's not all fluffed up. The reason being you're feeding a fresh, you're feeding fresh hard pellets, you're not feeding pellets that have been in the water for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Basically you need to make sure that your hook bait looks the same as what you're feeding. This is our third feed. At the moment we've had two indications but it looks like small fish. But not panicking. Just couldn't repeat the process. Tapping them pellets from a height. Make a bit of noise and slowly lower your rig down. Notice how I have the float dotted right down as well. So a lot of pellet bites are just a sharp dink. If you have your float stuck up too far, you think, should I strike, shouldn't I strike? It makes you strike, basically. Because the float goes under, so you naturally lift. We're fishing uh, 019 main line to an 015 hook length on this. Quite a robust rig. Just as the weather's turning now into autumn, I've scaled down from 017 hook lengths to 015, which the water's clearing up a little bit. When we switch to maggots later, it'll be fishing a 013 hook length on my maggot line with a 16 SLWG hook, which is a, a finer wire hook but fairly strong. We catch silvers and carp on them hooks. There we go, fish on. So you've seen just a, a, a small little dink and it's a, a decent fish. You've seen how patient we were just waiting, not feeding loads of bait, not throwing any bait. This is a, a nice carp by the look of it, hopefully in the mouth. Always keep your pole low to the water when you're shipping back. Try and keep minimum pressure on the fish. Feels like a decent fish. So keep the pole low till you get back to your top kit. So going on a little run again. Once you're happy.
time to break down onto your top kit but again keep your top kit nice and low to the water just feel through the elastic whether the fish is ready to come in or not and then slowly slowly creep your elastic back fish is going on another little run there so I'll just let the elastic pull out always keeping the pole low Once I can see the, my float, that's the only time I'll lift up. Shocking net in there. There he is in, in the bag. And pucked perfectly. If I can, could show you that on the camera. Perfectly in the top lip. Which is exactly where you want them. Means that fish has gone down, sucked your pellet in, you've pricked it in the top lip. Nice four pound fish to start with. Saying that's three feeds with no more than 15, 20 pellets in my peg. We're just going to repeat that process now. So basically we're going to ship back out and just repeat this process until we feel like there's nothing else being drawn into the peg with the way we're feeding. So again, onto our marker, nice and tight, tap in a few pellets, and then slowly let your rig straighten and slowly lower it down. Just be patient, sit and wait. And that bite was very, very delicate. Tiny little dink. You also notice as well my float sat up a bit. Simply because I've probably dragged it up that slope just a bit too much. So I'll relay my rig out so that my pellet falls in and sits against the slope. And you'll notice my float should also just be a little pimple again. So I'm always in contact with the weight of that pellet. So one fish after 20 minutes which is not too bad, but we've had three indications prior to that, which could have been carp in the peg. So I'm not going to rush to start switching to maggots yet. So our fourth feed, uh, obviously been talking quite a lot with us fishing so close, potentially a bit spooky to the fish, but fourth feeding at the moment, no indications whatsoever. So we'll probably have one or two more feeds on this line. And then we'll start building that maggot line up over the top of it. Catch a few silvers on the maggot line. And then show basically that by throwing the pellets over the maggot line we can draw some carp in as well. Which as I said is something that uh, won me the match on Sunday. It worked really well. No bite since that fish really. So I've got two choices now. We can start throwing a couple of pellets just to make a bit of noise. Or we can start dropping our pellets from a greater height. To make that noise. Because I like to keep a tight pile, that's what I'm going to do initially. So I'm basically going to rattle them pellets in from a height. to see if that draws a fish. So as I said, we're just gonna now rattle some pellets in high off the water, make a bit more noise than previously. Lay our rig out and just basically repeat the process. Let the rig tighten up, come back over our pellets and sit and wait. So I noticed there a little indication on its way down. So it looks like by rattling the pellets. Obviously as drew a fish into the peg. Let's see if we can hook him. Oh, 
was a nice bite. Definitely a fish in the peg there. You see it moving out, look. So by making that bit more noise, we drew a fish in. Give it 30 seconds and then we'll do repeat that process. Was a bit off guard there. <laughs> Missed the bite. <laughs> so basically what we're going to do now, we've caught one carp fishing pellets in the first 40 minutes. Had a couple of indications, but they're not actually wanting to come in and eat the pellets properly. So I'm now going to switch that line to maggots. It's exactly what I did in the match. Fed it up for a good half an hour. Went on, caught some lovely eyed. And then obviously the carp came in and I started to catch the carp on the maggots. But to draw another fish, another fish, I had to start feeding pellets. So I'm going to start throwing that maggot line and then I'll show you my rigs. So when we're feeding that maggot line, I'm picking up a good... 20 to 30 maggots throw it over the area we're fishing basically every time I go in I'm going to give them two feeds so that's 20 to 30 maggots twice so while I'm building that line up I'll just talk you through my rigs so the, the pellet rig that we've obviously started on Again, I've said earlier, I'm using 019 mainline to a black eye draw through a long kit. And I've shot at it with a, a strung bulk. don't know whether the camera will pick that up. I'll just try and show you that. So it's basically shot at with a strung bulk over probably the last eight inches. So I've got uh, six number eights there, a number 10 under my float, and a four inch uh, hook length to a 18 MWG with the band on I'm using a Malman Malman Adams float 4x14 you can see I've got a short lash there just so that I can pick up quickly on the pellets and just hook the fish and I've got an unbreak back shot just to keep my line still there's no wind today or very little wind which probably isn't helping us but obviously it helps keep the rig and present properly and when I when I shot up or when I've plumbed up I basically plumb up to the bottom of my body there so that I've got an inch or so laid on the deck and I'm fishing uh, the 2 plus 2 line basically it goes out here and it just drops over about 6 inches it's like a little slope I'm just sort of fishing at the bottom of that slope so where the hard bottom is rather than on the silt so that's my pellet rig And I'll just now show you my maggot rig. So my maggot rig, again, is a Malman float. It's a 4x12s carbon stem. So I can get a nice slow fall with my maggots. Or I can fold the rig over and bomb the maggots down to the deck. I'm fishing 017 mainline to a 013 hook length, a 16 SLWG hook. And again, fairly shortish lash with a number eight back shot. So I'm going to feed this out of my hand for a good half an hour, this maggot line, and I'll be going in using a medium guru pot, filling it full of maggots, kindering them in, following it down with my float. And then every time I hook a fish, I'll just give them one handful of 20, 30 maggots, just basically to draw the next fish in. I'm sure what will happen is we'll catch a few silvers, and then when the, the carp come in, the silvers generally move out. And it's then time to obviously get your bait down to the deck and hopefully prick some, uh, catch some carp. So we'll see how that goes. Let's build this maggot line up. Right, so we've built that uh, maggot line up now for about 20 minutes. So we're just going to go on it. Hooking double white maggot, one through the thin end, one through the fat end. Fill up our medium guru. Fishing grey hydro through a long kit. Soft enough for the hide, but also strong enough for the carp. 
lay our rig out, tap in our maggots, and then lift, hold our rig till it straightens up, and then slowly follow those maggots down to imitate the fall. And there's a fish on there, straight away, coming shallow. Lay that rig out again, till it straightens up, and then slowly down. There we go, bite straight away. Lay that rig out again. Straighten up. Slowly down. Once we get these hard coming, they don't have come thick and fast. With a bite missed. Lay that rig out again. Hold the line. Let that rig straighten up. Slowly down. Some funny indications like the fish are shallow, I think it's just a matter of getting them into our feeding pattern. Go pinch your maggots. Check our bait. Put fresh bait on every time. That's it. Indra maggots. Lay our rig out. Full kinder of maggots. Slowly down. There we go. Little dink. Nice side. Always check the eyed throat to see if they're rammed full of maggots. It normally means there's not a lot of fish in your peg, so they're getting a chance to eat all the maggots. Where if there's only a few, nice eyed, then basically it shows they're competing. There's a lot of fish there, so I'm just going to cut back on the feed after looking in that in the throat of that eyed. It was rammed with maggots. I don't want to fill them up too fast. So we'll just basically half fill the kinder pot this time instead of full. And then when I hook a fish, I'll just throw a few less maggots until we start seeing whether that gives us a quicker bite. So we're just going to half fill the kinder pot this time. Now rig out. Tap them maggots in. Hold the rig over the top. Let it straighten and then slowly down. Basically we're looking for a bite just after it settles like that. Click that one. Handful of maggots. Or a pinch of maggots. Hook bait's okay. Half a kinder. Ship out. Flick our rig out. Dump our maggots. Hold the rig straight. Slowly down. Look for a bite just after the settle. Like that, little nice fish on. 
and pinch your maggots. Let the ice side. Lovely hide. There's some real big hide in here, up to sort of pound and a half, two pound. It'd be nice if they show up. So half a kinder of maggots again, I just think we'll feed in a little bit too many. Flick that rig out. Dump them maggots. Lift our rig as it straightens and then follow it down. That's a lovely bite. I think that might be a carp. Maybe not. Lovely bite that one. Just what we need. So we're just going to the pinch of maggots again. See what we've got here. Looks like a nice fish. Maybe a carp or an F1. Could be a barbel. The way that's fighting. Feels like it could be a barbel. It is. It's a barbel. Lovely barbel on the maggot. Wood pound. Nice barbel. Again, we'll just keep repeating that process. There we go. Fish on. On the nice side. Yeah, so that, that one's not spewing any maggots, so... That's what we want really. Hot maggots are right, but not a big throat full of them. I'm gonna pinch of maggots again. You see I've got that grey hydro set slack so that we can catch these hard without bumping them off basically. You can see I've got a bit of slack hydro hanging out the back of my kit. Oh that was a nice bite straight away. That's what we're looking for. Once they're on it, should be immediate. Like that. Beautiful bite. So a few more fish coming into our peg now. Another nice hide. Hook popped out there just as I netted it. Other pinch of maggots. While we bait up, keep drawing them fish into our peg by throwing that pinch of maggots ready for the kinder. Tightens it up. Round your hook bait so you can get quicker bites. Draws the fish tighter into your hook bait. Lay that rig out. Kinder in, dump them maggots. Hold that rig. Slowly down. There we go. Another nice bite. One of these small F1s, swing that in, 
pristine little F ones that I was telling you about earlier about the pellets. About four ounces. Lovely little fish. Good pinch of maggots again. Now we bait up. We'll speed that process up shortly and we'll feed as soon as we hook a fish. Just to get them chance to get them maggots down the bottom before we actually go back out with our kinder. Put that rig out. Dump them maggots. Hold the rig straight. And then slowly down. There we go, lovely. Just give them a pinch of maggots while we play that fish. Spot on. Change that hook bait even though it looked okay. So you can see when you get into a rhythm on these hard and I'm sure they will get bigger. Some big cracking hard in here. And then what you'll find, you might get an hour of this and then it'll just switch off and that's when the carp will generally come in and move them fish out. Or the hard are full up basically sometimes as well. You need to get hit that first bite. Beautiful. They are getting slightly bigger. Give them a pinch of maggots again. Nice fish. Lovely. Beautiful fish in that. As I said, the mide will get bigger. There's a cracking hide. This one. Be a nice pound fish. Look at that for an hide. Beautiful fish. Seems about right, half a medium guru, the maggots, and a good 20 or 30 help me hand every time I hook a fish. Seems to have got into the rhythm now. Hit that bite straight away, which is what we're after. If we get the feeding right. And get one of them big eyed every drop in. And build a cracking weight. Feels like a car. Mm, it's a big eyed. Another one of them lovely eyed. Oh, that's a chub. Big chub. Fill up for a chub on maggots. Shows you what you can catch on a humble maggot. Beautiful, lovely bite, and another nice fish by the feel of it. Perfect. Give me a pinch of maggots. Draw the next fish.
There's a Bible, I think. Feels like another Bible. Nice Bible. Cracking fish. Beautiful Bible. There we go. Lads of fish down to the bottom. Might be the time to take that kinder pot off and just feed maggots out our hand. We'll give it one more go and then we'll assess that. Like that. <laughs> if we get that first bite, this this will be better. Just hitting that first bite. You can see how you can get through a lot of bait as well. The match at the weekend, I fed like uh, four and a half pints of maggots. Eventually, you will find the silvers will stop feeding. There's one on the drop there, and the carp will move in, move these out. But for now, we're just going to enjoy this. We'll come back to you later when it changes, and the carp have moved in. And we'll try and show that uh, fishing maggot from feeding pellet over the top. See if we can show what happened. So as you can see on my side tray, keep it pretty simple. Started with about three pints of maggots and then just some four and six mil hard pellets. Just feeding the maggot and then throwing a couple of hard pellets over the top just to draw some carp in. So quite simple really. See if we can catch a few more fish. Lovely lake. So the carp have now bullied the silverfish out. So what I'm doing now is I'm kindering the maggots in still. So dumping the maggots in. Lifting my float over the top and lowering it straight through the maggots. So create a a trap on the dot on the deck giving it a couple of minutes if I don't get a bite I'm just throwing a couple of six mil pellets over twice just to draw carp in so a couple of six mil pellets over my float just to give create that noise to draw a couple of pellet a uh, couple of carp in And then sitting and waiting. It's just exactly what I did on the match on uh, Sunday. Uh, just feeding them maggots alone. I was getting no indications. I was sitting and waiting and throwing a couple of pellets over the top. It was resulting in some bites and some nice carp which won me the match with uh, quite a low weight, 50 pound. But I do believe if I'd just fished maggot alone, without throwing them pellets over to draw that carp in, I wouldn't have caught them carp. There we go, fish on. There he is in, in the bag. So if you've enjoyed the video, please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Cooper's Commercial Match Angling. 
hopefully you can pick up a few more helpful tips catch you a few more fish put them in the net there's just a few of the fish we've caught in just a couple of hours fishing feeding maggots throwing pellets over the top to make some noise cracking bag of carp barbel hide and chub awesome fishing so don't forget scoop them in your net